Hello there. Welcome to the modern era that is bringing you to the 1800 to 1900 year. The Stolen Child by William Butler Yeats. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to Dr. Mazin and my fellow classmates. My partner, Muhammad Salihin Muhammad Yusuf, and I, Nufara Ain Bentir Osman, we will be presenting on the, the modern era poems. So the first poem is The Stolen Child. It is written by an Irish poet, William Butler Yeats. He was born in 1865 in Dublin, Ireland, and died in 1939. He was an Irish poet and was born in Dublin, Ireland. However, when he was much younger, the family moved to Sligo to live with his grandparents. So Sligo is well known for its Irish folklore and legends. William also had won a Nobel Prize for one of his poems. He was one of the greatest English poets in the 20th century. As he was brought up in Sligo, that is well known for its Irish folklore and legends, this is what had influenced his writing. But in the first place, he preferred romance settings. So what happened when he joined a poet club? He took one of his friend's advice, O'Leary's advice, to put some elements of Irish folklore and legends into his poems. William Butler Yeats engaged complexity in life through his poems. He also had maintained cultural roots by putting some of the Irish folklore and legends and the elements of the legends into his poem. So this is a little bit background of the poem. Okay, so next, I will paraphrase this poem. It has four stanzas. So, let's paraphrase the poem. As you can see here, my drawings are castle, child, and also fairy. So this is how I paraphrased the poem. There is a fancy land hidden behind the rocky highway. That is the castle. And I feel welcome to the fantasy place. It has all this beautiful nature. I am mesmerized by the moonlight. The reddest berries that I will eat and savor every day. I want to run away from the hectic life. I am mesmerized by the moonlight glasses. I just feel too afraid. I am too afraid, anxious of the real world that is full of troubles. Fairies lure me to this fantasy land. I feel more secure now that I am becoming one of the creatures in the fantasy land. So that is how I will paraphrase the poem. Now let's move on to the literature elements that we can find in the poem with Salihin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Dr. Mazli, my partner and my fellow classmates. Okay, thank you Farah. Okay, now I'm going to explain to you uh, what are the examples of figurative language that we can find in this poem, which is the stolen child. Now I'm beginning to explain to you with the first stanza. Okay, so for the first stanza here, so in each place, the real and the mythical mix. So the first stanza begins with the lines where deeps the rocky highland. So it states that the land is separated from the real world and it just the fantasy. So this is enhanced through the repetitions of where. So where we can find the repetitions where in the first stanza, second stanza, and third stanza. And the sloop boots, signature in the forms of flapping herons and drowsy water rats, is presented alongside the hidden fairy bag full of berries and of red stolen cherries. Okay, and the examples of metaphor that we can find in the first stanza is the leafy island. Okay, it's a reference in the opening stanza that has a clear echo of industry and the sense of escapes. So the examples of alliterations in the first stanza is the there lies a leafy island. And to the 
the water and the water. So the added tradition here is lies and leafy and waters and water. So to the water and to the water, it emphasizes both the freedoms and the danger that are associated with the development. And the examples of onomatopoeia is where's flapping Harry's wig and for the world's small tools of whipping that you can understand. So the words flapping and whipping is the onomatopoeia and it also can be arbitrary imagery. And there's also a visual imagery uh, in the first stanza which is and of the raiders stolen cherry. So it gives the visual color of the cherries which is red and the rhymes of berries cherries give masking and early clues that these berries are at best mischievous at worst doubtful in the connotations of danger and blood in the color of red and the thiefing of the fruits so and um, the example of the kinesthetic imagery in this first stanza which is there we have high our very back. So high is the example of kinesthetic imagery. So in the second stanza here, um, as you can see by Fergus Roses, so we are introduced to more details about this other world. So the examples of alteration is that with width of bullet closes and far off by Fergus Roses. So wave here and wave far and furthest is the examples of alliteration. So far off also display the uh, distance of this idea from reality and roses um, display uh, the distance of this world from modern island. So the use of pretty bit repetition here is typical of his using it to reinforce meaning and create a musical quality in his poetry. So the alliteration in this stanza here, um, as we can see, which is where we come for this, put light, pro and pretty. So these examples uh, add to the sense of secrecy. So the examples of visual imagery that we can find in the second stanza, which is moonlight closes. So the imagery of beauty and wonder of a fantasy world. Glosses is not worthy um, of magic and eyes and has unworldly qualities. And also the examples of visual imagery here, which is dim gray sense. Okay, so the connection between the gray sense and the pavement gray see the real world presented as a place without color and the sense of um, the sense of escapism here is shot through with um, desperation as we both poet readers and fairies so as you can see here the word for it okay Put it is to forget the worlds of trouble. So all it ends be in a world that the moonlight superficially closes. So the examples of kinesthetic imagery in this second stanza, which is we put it all the night. Okay. And we be all the that. So next is Wallace Stevens of Modern Poetry. Today, I'm going to present to you about of modern poetry. So, of modern poetry, this poem is written by Wallace Stevens, a distinguished American poet. So, Wallace Stevens was born in Reading, Pennsylvania, and he attended Harvard University as an undergraduate. So, more than any other modern poet, Stevens was concerned with the transformative power of the imagination. And he was also into composing poem on his way to and from the office and he still continued until evening uh, to spend his days behind a desk at the office and led a quiet and eventful life. So, so of modern poetry, 
is a thought provoking a piece about modern poetry that subject an impact on the objects. So it also emphasizes that all ways of writing should be involved with times. So the poet state a criticism of all way of writing. And there is a reason why this poem is titled of modern poetry and it first few lines give clue as to the importance of differentiating modern poetry from what came before this poem details the speaker's revolutionary ideas regarding um, poetry the poem begins with the statement that writing poetry is not an easy job so the writers and the poet need to keep the defined paradigm in mind. So in doing so, they only strive to maintain the set standards and ignore the set reality of the world. According, according to him, the poet should let go of the old ways of writing poetry. So while talking about the attributes of good poetry, he states a good poem does not require hardly defined words. It should be written in a way as if words are reaching the audience in the existing times and space. Moreover, the actions and incidents of the poem should be lifelike. Hence, the poet propose a few guidelines to bring changes in the old method of writing poetry and also the major themes that in of a modern poetry which is are uh, three there was creativity literature and modernism these three are the major themes of these poems and the poet evaluates the simplicity and satisfaction past poetry. He suggests that the writer should bring a revolutionary changes in the poetic world. They can easily meet the current needs of the readers only by writing as a mirror to the modern times. They should live the idealized parts of the poetic world and write about the realities around them. Okay, now we are going to the very first part of modern poetry. Okay, so the persona tells that with the current time, the poetry must evolve. Instead of imitating poetry from the past, he shares his rules or ideas about how modern poetry ought to be. It must be something modern, according to him, something set in real places, people and events. He wants poetry to allow individuals who enjoy reading poems to connect themselves to the poems that they are reading. It could help them find joy in their own life. The modern world is already a tough enough place to live. It does not need poetry to make it any tougher. So that is a further phrase of modern poetry poem. Thank you so much, Salihin. Now let's move on to the structure of the poem and literature elements that we can find in the poem. So now let's take a look at the structure of the poem. So the poem has four stanzas. It has quatrain, that is four-lined stanza. In the first and last quatrain, in the first and last stanza, there are quatrains. How about the rhyme? It does not have any uh, particular rhyme or pattern in the poem, so therefore, it is a free verse poem. It also has 10 to 14 syllables in a line. And it also has a broken line. Each, uh, each, section, each of two sections in the poem, it contains a broken line resembling the structure of the poem. How about the tone and the mood? Tone is the feelings and emotions 
of the writer when he's writing the poem. So the tone is persuading and convincing because the writer wants to convince the readers of what a poet of what a modern poetry is and how it should be written. Next we have mood. Mood is our feelings and emotions as readers while we are reading the poem. So our mood the mood of the poem is curious and intrigued as we want to know what is a modern poetry. Now let's move on to imagery. The first imagery that I can find is auditory imagery that appeals to the sense of listening, sense of hearing. As mentioned in the poem, we have an invisible audience listens. Next, we have organic imagery that appeals to the sense of emotion and feelings. As mentioned in the poem, we have expressed in an emotion of two people. So this is how the writer, how the poet emphasizes on feelings, emotions about modern poetry. And the last one we have kinesthetic imagery, an element that appeals to our sense of movement. For example, we of a man skating, a woman dancing, and a woman coming. So these are the movements of human beings skating, dancing, and also combing her hair. So that is all for imagery. How about personification? So personification is giving um, human attribute to an inhuman object. For example, the poet states that the modern poetry is as um, an actor who speaks words in the ear. So the human attribute that is speaking is given to an inhuman object that is the modern poetry. Next, let's move on to simile. So what is simile? Simile is comparing two elements in the poem by using the word like or as. For example, modern poetry is like an insatiable actor. Modern poetry is being compared to an actor who is greedy. That's all for simile. For onomatopoeia, it refers to the words that imitate the sounds of things, such as an instrument that that is twanging into a wiry string. Here, the poet wants to emphasize that the sound of an instrument that is twanging to a wiry string. Next, we have the whole poem as an extended metaphor. So, the traditional poetry is being compared to a theater and everything, even the script, was set. However, the modern poetry is a new stitch that inspires new ideas. So, metaphor is a figure of speech that compares different objects to objects without using the word as or like. Entire poem is a, an extended metaphor because it compares traditional poetry versus modern poetry values. Okay. Then we have, last but, not, last but not least, we have enjambment. So enjambment is defined as a thought in the verse that does not end at a line break. As you can see in the structure of the poem, be of a man skating, a woman dancing, a woman blank, combi. So this is to show the structure of the poem. Therefore, we have presented all the literature devices that we can find in the poem of modern poetry. So we have presented two of the modern era po poems. First is the stolen child and the second one is of modern poetry. So that is all for now. Thank you for mm, What is poetry? What is modern poetry exactly? 
to finding a satisfaction? Hmm, I think of a modern poetry. Let's go to the castle! Let's go to the castle! Alright, let's go! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Um, hello sir! Have you seen my child? She was just here! I mean, I just... Oh my god! Did she go to the castle? Oh no! My baby is tall!